Welcome everyone, it is 2017 and this year is going to be our year! Or the year that we all perish in a fiery blaze of hate. Either way, we need to work on accepting our own deaths, right? Let's get to it! My dad wants to be buried in his yard. Can he do that? Burying someone in the backyard seems like something you should be able to do. It's my land, it's my daddy's corpse. What you gonna do, government? The answer is that burying dad in the backyard can be legal, but it can also be kind of a bureaucratic nightmare. Every country, city, state, town, whatever, have different laws when it comes to this, and many have no laws on the books at all. There are some places that it is easier to accomplish. The UK and Texas come to mind. You know where you for sure can't do it? In California, where I work. Michael Jackson actually wanted to be buried at Neverland Ranch, but even with his massive team of lawyers and Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger stepping in, they still couldn't do it, and they ended up giving up and interring him at Forest Lawn in Los Angeles. Basically, you need to figure out who issues the burial permits in your town or county and be in touch. Start planning early. You're in a much better position if you live on land that's larger than five acres and is very rural, nowhere near a big city. Now you know I am very do-it-yourself deaf, but I kind of see the logic there. Imagine you live in a suburb and you bury dad in the backyard. Then you have that third kid and you want a bigger place and so you move out and the new owner is trying to put in a new sprinkler system and it's like, ah, dear god, dad's skull. What's the difference between a pathologist and a mortician? So pathologist is a more general term, someone who diagnoses diseases, and they could very well work with living people. A forensic pathologist, on the other hand, is someone who specifically determines the cause of death in a body, usually through autopsies or other investigations. This is what I wanted to be when I was in high school. I saw some dead babies in jars at a local hospital and was like, yes, this is so cool. A mortician, or funeral director, or undertaker, on the other hand, works with preparing the body for a funeral and then working to have it cremated or buried. This is what I actually do now because medical school seems hard. So forensic pathologist figures out why someone dies, funeral director or mortician respectfully gets rid of the body, essentially, at least in Western culture. Now, this can be a little confusing because in the UK, a mortician is actually also someone who does pathology at the hospital mortuary. Language, why do you do this to us? What are your thoughts on human cannibalism for survival? I couldn't decide whether to answer this question or the question about my favorite matte lipsticks for the new year. I decided to go with cannibalism. When you say cannibalism for survival, I assume you're talking about plane crash, high in the Andes, Donner Party, extreme situation type deal. If you murder someone to eat them, obviously that is not ethically acceptable, but if someone has already died and you don't have any religious prohibitions against it and you are literally starving, I say why not? I've read so much about cultures that consider it a great honor to consume the dead that I know that our taboo against it is relative. I sure wouldn't like it, but I probably also wouldn't like starving to death either. What do you think? Let's have a robust discussion about cannibalism in the comments. It's 2017, everyone for themselves. I heard they have to break the corpse's arms for a viewing. When I first read this, I was like, ugh, how macabre, what house of horrors, funeral home are you dealing with? But I think I actually know what you mean by that. After death, all of the muscles in a person's body relax, and then several hours later, stiffen up, rigor mortis. If someone is preparing a body, embalming it or dressing it, they might end up massaging or flexing or pulling out the muscles to reposition the body. And this process is actually called breaking rigor mortis. But it doesn't actually have anything to do with breaking the bones in someone's arm. I wouldn't even know how to break someone's arm, and it certainly wouldn't benefit me as a funeral director. If you could go back in time and prepare any historical figure, whose corpse would it be? I couldn't decide between Amelia Earhart's corpse, because then we would know the mystery of what happened to her, 
or like a famous T-Rex corpse. You could polish its teeth, cross its little claw arms over its chest. That's it for this episode. Please subscribe, clicky clicky the little button below because this is going to be the year of content. It's going really well so far. Uh, I'm in my childhood bedroom at my parents' house and I have bronchitis, so living my best life. <laughs> Woo! <coughs> Brought to you with support from People's Memorial Association and the Co-op Funeral Home and donations from viewers like you. Adorable.